there it is. Okay. There it is. Let's do this. It's nice a, of you to join us, Jimmy. It's been a minute. Why am I in a big old winter coat and you're wearing a Hawaii piece? Are you trying to project the good weather outside? Moss Motos. I know, have I've you been, been there? Yeah, I have. But are you trying to project the good weather? Exactly. We got six inches of snow outside. How do you know it's six inches? Uh, you go measure? I don't want to measure. I know six inches. All right. We good? I'm ready. Let's go. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to 2024. Hopefully you guys had a great uh, start to your new year. Uh, real quick update. We did a giveaway one or two videos ago, and we will be announcing the winners of that giveaway um, later on this week. It'll be a separate video, a short one, um, but stay tuned for that one. Um, yeah. How's it going, Jimmy? Good, good. So once again, this guy, so Utah gets about one or two inches of snow, and this guy takes an hour delay. Like this, like this. An hour delay. If I go this way, I mean this way. An hour delay to make it to my house. One, I had to shovel. You clearly didn't shovel because I had to walk through the snow to get to your doorstep. One to two inches of snow, and this not, guy does not know how to drive. Which is not courteous. Second of all, my car is not snow friendly. Yeah, what car do you have? It's just a little Lexus, and it's not two wheel drive. Four -wheel? No, it is all wheel drive. Okay, but it's all not right. So well, let's get into it. We have so much to talk about. Um, as with everything, pickleball continues to produce the drama that we love. We love some um, drama. Um, let's but first go. and foremost, we would love to give a big shout out to our title sponsor who makes this show possible, the Pickler. Real no, quick, Jimmy, pickler. who is the Pickler? The best indoor pickleball facility in all the land. They are doing franchises. They've sold yeah. over 200 locations across the U.S. If you would love to have a franchise come to your city, if you would like to operate one, reach out to the Pickler at thepickler.com to inquire more information yeah. about it. 1,800 courts have been, that's what they're up to right now. We love it. We love it. We love it. They've signed it. on for 1,800 courts so far. That's insane. All right. One of the biggest things that just came up. Yeah. What was it, Jimmy? <laughs> the new ball. The new ball. The ball controversy. The ball controversy. So walk us through this. So Vulcan. Let's back up. Dura has been the official ball of the PPA for since the PPAs started. Yes. So three plus years now? Yep. And four their plus years, yeah. Yeah, four plus years. Their contract was up. And they essentially said, hey, you know, it's up for bid at this point. A little background information as well. Pickleball Central, they used to own Dura. They manufactured that ball um, forever. Yeah. And then Onyx, who's also known as Escalade Sports, yes. they bought the ball from Pickleball Central maybe four or five years ago. Yeah. So now Onyx is producing so that So Onyx exact produces same ball. the Dura. Yeah. Exactly. So they've used the Dura for four or five years, four years, whatever it is. Their contract was up and they said, hey, we're going to put this out there and we're going to let people bid. Yep. And they had a lot of people bid. Mm -hmm. I think realistically, mm -hmm. there's probably three to five serious contenders. Yeah. And Vulcan comes in and they win that bid. And Vulcan bid. I, I was told that Vulcan and one other company were neck and neck. Mm -hmm. And they ended up choosing the Vulcan ball. Mm -hmm. That bid was insanely high. Yeah, so rumors are that it's around two two million annually. And, annually. And then there's an an additional five hundred thousand worth of like ad spend or marketing promotional yes. dollars that they have to spend with it. Um, but also, in addition to that, the PPA will be receiving royalties of eight to ten percent. Yeah, of yeah. all the balls sold. Yeah, so it's a pretty sweet deal for a PPA. Yeah, it is. And so, the what comes with a large um, contract like this also comes with some larger pricing, mm -hmm. and that ends up unfortunately being passed on to the consumer. And amateurs are not happy about the price. Now. I'm going to be really honest about this. Is okay? Big Pickle pain what you're you're about to say right now? No, this has nothing to do with Big Pickle. Amateurs have a right to complain. They really do. Okay. 
I Real mean, quick, what was the pricing on the <coughs> Dura ball? Excuse me. If you recall, I think Dura's around three dollars a ball. Okay. If you don't, and, but Franklin's, you actually can. There has been deals like Walmart was selling Franklin's for a dollar a ball. You can get a hundred Franklin's for a for a hundred dollars at one point. Okay. Okay. But if you want to use the official ball of the PPA, you've got to go Vulcan at this point. Yep. Or you had to go Dura. Dura was around three two fifty to three dollars a ball. Okay. The issue with that was that Duras would often break they fairly would. quickly. Yes. I would say maximum of one week, maximum, but normally two to three days, let's call it. Yeah, and if you're, I mean, like we just talked about, it's snowing outside right now, right? But even in colder temperatures, you can get, I mean, there's times where it'd be 50 degrees out and we'd go through four Duras in a match. Yeah, yeah. So that's the knock on Dura. They also get out around, but they're the fastest ball in the market. Everybody got used to them. And I was a ball snob. I'll be honest. I was a ball snob, so I love the Dura. Okay? So, backing up, I get the consumers are upset. Granted, some of you have $2,000 worth of paddles in your backpack, and you're complaining about $0.50 cents extra for a ball. But I get it. They have a right. Amateurs have a right to complain. $4 a ball does seem like a lot. If you compare it to if you're playing golf, you know, Titleist Pro V1, like, that's expensive. Okay? Hopefully these last longer. I think that they will. We've played with them. We have. Yep. And they, they do last longer. I mean, I think we can come out and say that. Yep. But here's my issue. Okay. Let me talk about my issue. Tell us, Jimmy. Travis Rettenmeyer goes on his podcast. Your favorite guy. And he complains. Now, Travis gets them for $2 a ball. Mm-hmm. Because he gets some for free. And then he pays $2 a ball as a pro. And he goes on his podcast and complains about the pricing and complains about the ball. If you are a professional player, you can't complain about the price of anything right now because the price went up so your ass can get paid. Okay. You're making 300 plus whatever thousand dollars a year, Travis. You've never won anything, unfortunately. I, I like you, but you haven't won anything. And you're still making that amount of money. So other things are gonna go up to compensate it, mm-hmm. right? The Dodgers just signed Otani. Ticket prices are going to go up. Dodger dogs are about to be more expensive. Beers are about to go up Mm -hmm. because you have to cover those costs. And where do those costs get passed on to? They get passed on to the consumer. It sucks, but that's life. And so PPA has million and MLP. Now that they're merging mergers, sounds like it's going to be allegedly done next week. They have millions of dollars in contracts. So they're going to take the highest bidder. With his, which is Vulcan, and if people want to complain, they can complain, but guess what? They've got to cover those contracts in some way, and the best way to do that is sponsorship money, TV money, mm-hmm. right? All of these things, and the, yeah, your ticket prices might even go up for PPA events this year because they have to cover those contracts. So if you are in the boat that the pros should get paid more, which I think they should, then you also need to understand that that money has to come from somewhere. And Travis, as a pro, read the room a little bit, bud. You can't complain because that's how you're getting part of the reason that you're getting paid. Mm -hmm. There's Pickleball Central is owned by the PPA. I don't think that's a secret, right? No. That was their biggest revenue generator last year was Pickleball Central. Mm -hmm. And they have certain margins that they have to hit. So now that there's two and a half million dollars annually on the line for Vulcan, Vulcan's got to boost their cost of the ball, their price to hit that. That goes to Pickleball Central. So now Pickleball Central's raw cost is a little bit higher. And now PPA is like, hey, our margins are 60% or whatever it is with Franklin. Our margins are only 40% with this Vulcan because Vulcan has to try and make up some money. So they have to raise the cost. So it's not like just Vulcan is charging $4 a ball. Pickleball Central is too. But people have to also understand that this ball is going to last longer. It is, for sure. And so if you spend 3 to $5 on a Dura, but you're spending 6 to 8 on a Vulcan, but that Vulcan ball is lasting two to three times longer. I mean, it's simple economics. That ball is yeah, more valuable I, in terms of durability. Yeah, I, absolutely. But my thing is, is as a professional, you cannot complain about the cost of the ball. Like you just are, you don't have that right anymore. If you, if you're taking that big contract, because the cost of that ball has gone up partly because you guys and deservedly So some of you should get paid. Mm-hmm. 
One thing that's very interesting that I heard is that for the pro matches at all these tournaments, they're going to be alternating or switching balls out to new balls every single game. Every game. Every yeah. game. Yeah. So, so I think that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, that is cool. So balls aren't going to go out around. Yeah. Right. Which I'm going to uh, put this on the record. I've been playing with the Vulcan ball for probably a month and a half, and I have not had any of my balls go out of round. I've heard I, some other people, but personally, I, I have not had any of mine. Me neither. And we, like I said, I, I think I was first given the Vulcan balls back in, gosh, October, yeah. November. Um, and we've used them for a while. And I've had no issues. And what's funny is I've shown up to, to open play. I'll pull out a Vulcan ball. I won't say what it is. And most people actually think that it's just a green dura. Yeah. And nobody's had any complaints. Nobody said anything about it. It's a good ball. But at the end of the day, we're like we have said in the past, it is still a plastic ball. Yeah. It is still a piece of plastic. And plastic <laughs> is, I'm going to use a big word here. All right. Malleable. Malleable. Which means that it can, might go out around. It might crack. It might break. There's things, it's still plastic. But... I think it will last longer than a Dura. I think if somebody, some guy that's, well, you have some finance guy. There's some dude on Facebook that literally is like, like his life has ended because of this ball, the cost of this ball. And he's been on every single post. Michael Rubano. Have okay. you seen him? I've seen some of his I stuff, think his yeah. life is over because this ball is more money. Yeah. And he has gone on every post to protest. And he's like, I will never play with this ball. Yeah. I would like him to maybe buy some Duras, buy some Vulcans. See which ones last longer. And then at the end of the year, maybe calculate your costs because I bet they're pretty similar. And the thing is, if you don't want to use it, then don't use it. Exactly. You don't have to use it only yeah. for PPA tournaments. Yeah. And there's great balls out there that, that aren't this. That's fine. Yeah. We're, like you said, we're, we're, it's okay. But the point is, is if you want to use the official ball, the PPA tour, it is now Vulcan. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's going to last longer. Yeah. I just struggle when a pro is complaining about the cost because it just doesn't make any sense. Like, dude, you're part of the reason for that cost. Yeah. So with that being said, Vulcan. Vulcan. You can use our code. We have a code with Vulcan. They are now sponsoring. They are going to be the title ball of KOTC. Yes. Now we've been sponsored by Vulcan for a while. I Yes. Yes. You have, but the podcast too. Yeah. And essentially, I'm going to back up a little bit because one of our OG sponsors was Crown. Crown Pickleball. And I've had a lot of people be like, well, what about Crown? What about Crown? Let me just clarify Crown this. Pickleball right here. We still have a great relationship with Kevin at Crown. Okay. There's nothing. There's no bad blood. We love Crown. Crown is a great ball. It's a great price. Kevin has expanded. He's now expanded into paddles. Mm -hmm. He's expanded into grips, over grips. Yeah. Which I don't know if most people know this, but that's how Vulcan got started. Mm -hmm. Vulcan actually licensed their over grips to Rawlings. Yes. Yep. For baseball bats and things like that. Yeah. Um, he's expanded into ex other accessories. Yeah. Just a bunch of different products. Yeah. yeah. And now he's doing a podcast. Yeah. And so there is a little bit of a conflict of interest there, obviously. Yeah. Because we are crossing over into similar spaces and you know you have obviously a very long history with Vulcan yeah so when we started and this so, podcast I mean we were able to get certain sponsors because um, they weren't in competing fields yeah and now that all these companies are trying to compete for the same product we have to align ourselves with the ones that we've been with yeah, or the highest exactly. price and there were certain things that obviously you weren't able to promote with Vulcan, right? Like you're Exactly. Not, you, I mean, even in the past, we've had people come to us and say, hey, we've got this cool backpack. Well, Vulcan sells a backpack. Yeah. So we haven't been able to take on certain sponsorships. So at this point, Vulcan is the official ball sponsor. Of KOTC. Of KOTC. And you can use code KOTC. Use code KOTC at VulcanSportingGoods.com. Sporting goods. Yes. Uh, to bring that high price of $4 down to... Uh, what can we say what it is? I don't know if we can say what is it like 15% off or 20% no, off? more. It's 20. It's around 20%. We'll say around that. around 20%. Yeah. It actually off. makes the ball a lot closer to what the Dura is. Yeah. Uh, and I, we actually had a ton of people use our code already. Yeah. So check it out. Use the code. It actually will bring it down closer to what most people are expecting. And like I said, I have no issues with amateurs complaining because things are going up and you know, mm. I mean, 
you know, we go to the grocery store and eggs are the, the other thing I'll also say is it's all about expectations. I played tennis. I played college tennis, played juniors. Every single time we stepped on the court for a match, we yeah. popped open a brand new can of balls. Yeah. A brand new can of balls. Do you know how much th- those cost? Actually, I don't, I don't know. know. Five to ten dollars, somewhere yeah. in there. Five yeah. to ten dollars for a brand new can of balls. Yeah. And so every single time you step on the court, that was the expectation. But yeah. up until now, people are so used to um, using the same ball over and over and over again. Um, I was telling you, Jimmy, but the thing that I personally love about this Vulcan ball is as soon as you grab it, brand new. It seems very playable. It's a great ball. The Dura, I do like, but it seems like it took two to three or four games to kind of get scuffed up and kind of break in. This new ball, for me, you can grab it brand new and it's good to go. You don't need to worry about bounces or anything like that. And so we've talked about this before, what people maybe don't realize, and we've mentioned it on previous episodes, but the Duras that pros play with are actually new Duras that they take and they put them in a tumbler Mm -hmm. and they scuff them up. Yeah. So that they're not shiny new, fresh out of the package. Yeah. And then they restamp them with the dirt with the logo. Yeah. Because obviously the logos wear off as you play with them. Yeah. Where and they this, might they might still do this with the Vulcans. They might tumble them a little bit, but honestly, from these, my experience, you don't have to do that. You can grab a brand new one and you can start playing and, and they're more, not worry yeah. about the ball skipping or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. And so they're more ready to play. So speaking of balls, okay. APP has a new ball too. Weird. So have you seen it? I have not seen it. I have not played with it. I have not heard anything about it. Because they have a tournament going on right now. Are they using it right now? Uh, no. I think that they said that they're going to use... Are they using... I don't know what they were using. Franklin's? Okay. No, they're using Dura. Or Dura's. Yeah. They're going to use those and they're going to give players like a month to get acclimated. Okay. But there's this new owl. It's called Owl. So Owl, I, it makes the quiet paddles. Yeah. So now they have an Owl ball. Um, but the owners of Owl have invested in the APP. And so I assume Everyone's that Everyone's doing is, business with yeah. each other. And I assume that that's part of this. Like they've invested into the APP. And Do you so, know the dollar amount of that uh, sponsorship? No, I don't. I don't know the dollar amount of that, but I'm sure that, you know, some of this, you know, some of the fact that they now have ownership in APP, maybe, you know, they kind of did wow, some man. Um, exchange there. It's tough for Dura. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Dura. All of a sudden. Franklin. The, the thing with Franklin is Franklin will always be there. I think Franklin there. will still be Yeah. Popular. They'll always be there. It's a popular ball. It's inexpensive. A lot of amateurs love the Franklin because of the softness of it. Mm-hmm. They actually prefer that. Vulcan gets soft after a little bit as well. Yeah. yeah. So, but Dura. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. It's a rough market out there. And yeah. there's an arms race. And so far, as we know right now, Vulcan and. Owl have won. Now they're still MLP. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure the MLP is out there trying shopping to shopping around, shopping the around MLP ball. Yeah. Cause I don't think this Vulcan deal actually crosses over to MLP for now. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. So yeah, lo- lots of ball drama, but we'll be using it this upcoming week at the master. So I'm sure the comments will be, I've talked to a few pros uh-huh. have, that have been playing with it. Mm-hmm. In fact, the one common thing that every single one of those pros have said so, I mean, I'm talking like half a dozen, actually probably 10 people, mm-hmm. is that it's lighter than the Dura mm-hmm. and they feel quicker and their hands feel faster, which is interesting. They feel faster? Well, just because the ball's lighter. So okay. they feel like they are fa- have faster hands. Huh. I would say almost the opposite. It plays a little bit slower. Which and is so that encourages more firefights, which maybe that makes them feel faster because they're able to stay in those firefights longer. Longer. So yeah. they maybe that's what makes them feel like their hands are faster, yeah. right? So yeah. I don't know. I think that that could be exciting. Yeah. Okay, right. um, moving on. But first and foremost, we'd love to give a big shout out to our next sponsor, uh, C&D Pickleball Nets. Yes. You actually sent me a video the other day where it was like, is this a C&D Pickleball Net? And it was because he couldn't tell because it was a custom made, custom color for yeah. this court. Yeah. So I could tell that it looked like a C&D net, obviously, and you can see it. But the net is in the background, but it was a custom color. It was blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was, I was actually... At Proton. Proton, yeah. Proton is putting a cord in. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, it looks sick. So like, C&D, they make the best heavy-duty nets out there. Um, 
Go check them out. Use code KOTC. Yeah. They also do custom colors and they also have a couple different products if you're wanting to stop balls from coming onto other courts or court signage, just different a variety of products. Um, go check them out. They're big sponsors of the show. We appreciate them and they yeah. make incredible the, nets. The best pickleball nets.com. Use code KOTC. Okay, moving on. All right, so this week is going to be fun. This is going to be the first tournament in 2024. It's the Masters in Palm yeah. Springs, California. Um, you have to wear all white. Do you like that? Do you like that dress code? I do. I wonder if they can do like an all black tournament as well, just to keep things equal. I think that'd be fun. All black? Yeah, all black everything. Yeah. Should they do it one for each color, blue? Yeah. Yellow. Depending well, on actually, like, probably not yellow, but orange. Maybe. Red. Yeah, they should do bright green. Yeah. Max the balls. Depending um, on what part of the country you're in. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a beautiful venue. I mean, Palm yeah. Springs is great. The backdrop is yeah. beautiful, gorgeous. Weather looks pretty good. 60s, which compared to here, we'll take. Okay, so we also have a ton of these ex-tennis pros that are supposedly making the switch to pickleball. Yeah, so, so. This, so this is the first... PPA event with the new progression draw. Yes, correct. You want to explain another pro progression draw? Sure. So in past, when you go to a pickleball tournament, um, you play singles one day, mixed doubles another, and then doubles the final day, whatever. This one, you're only doing one round, but you're doing one round of each event on yeah. one day. And then if you win, you do the next round of that event on the next day. The so next singles day. is going to be at 10 a.m. Mixed doubles will be at 12. And then men's doubles, women, women's doubles will be at two. Something like yeah. that. And then if you win, you move on to the next day. If you lose, you're out for that event. Which is like what tennis is doing, right? Yeah. And so there are play, play in rounds mm -hmm. currently. And so there are actually players who are going to start on Tuesday. Yep. And a couple days. Yeah. And they have to play Tuesday, Wednesday, yep. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep. The same event to get to the finals. Assuming they win each. Assuming they yep. keep winning. And then there's other players, obviously, that will receive buys. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you're a top eight seed, you actually won't play until Thursday, mm -hmm. that event, which is yep. in, which makes it interesting. Now, one thing that PPA has said that why they're, do, they're doing this is it allows them to get more players on center court. Mm -hmm. It allows them to get more matches streaming because you don't have as many matches each day right yeah, yeah and going on at the same time it also gives the players actual times that they're going to play yeah the so last one they did it at i mean they got backed up pretty quickly but yeah. there were a lot of other factors at, that at nationals yeah, right nationals yeah um weather was an issue but i would imagine if everything goes to plan then you should start relatively yeah. on time yeah so they're they're planning on doing this 10 times this year i think yeah, all their majors and cups yeah. are yeah. their top two tiers, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah. so with that being said, the draws are out. The draws are out. There's a lot of ex tennis stars that are in these draws. They made PPA made a video, and essentially the video said that they have a committee that was doing the draws, and the committee has said that they reserve the right to essentially advance these tennis pros mm. far enough into the draw. Where they don't have to do the play. Where they don't have yeah. to play the playing games. Yeah. So that makes the seedings and some of these draws insane to me. Yes. I mean, I don't want to use the word unfair, but the word unfair is... So let's start. We'll go through it. Okay, let's go through this quick because there's the draws are massive. Yeah. They're, yeah. So we'll just start with big. men. Just some little things that stand out like men's singles. We'll start with men's singles. So Ben is obviously the one... Um, feds, the two, you know, I mean, it's the usual suspects. Your top eight, you'll guess it's Tyson, it's J Dub, it's Pablo, Christian Alshon, Connor Garnett, and Jay. None of those guys play until the round of 16. Mm -hmm. So they all actually have buys until Thursday. Okay. And then, so, and then the play in games, um, you're playing in the playing game. Yes. Against Ivan, I don't even know how to say his last I name. I think it's Ivan Yakovlevich. Yakovlevich. And the winner of that plays. Kwang Dong or George, George's guy, Kwang Dong, yeah. or a play in. Yes. Um, but Donald Young is in this draw. So he does actually have to play a play in for this one. The men's singles is tough. Yeah, it is. I it mean, it is. There are some good I mean, athletic people out there. Look at this. this. These are just some of the players that are in the play in. Okay. Kwang Dong, you, Ryan Sherry, 
Um, Gabe Tardio. I think Roscoe Bellamy is going to be a good singles player. Anik Lahani. You skipped Sam Query. I know, on purpose. Alex Newman. Uh, Naveen Beasley. Rafa Hewitt. AJ's in there. Oh, AJ Kohler. Rafa Hewitt. You just yeah, said that. Yeah. yeah, Rafa Hewitt. Those guys are in the play-in game. Well, it's almost like the play-in to the play-in as well. Yeah, yeah. You have to play that, and then that gets you into the... S- round of 64. Round of 64, yeah, and then, the normal tournament starts with a round of 32. Yeah. That's when the normal one. Yeah, so this is essentially so a round play-ins. of 128. Yeah. So you go 128 to 64 to 32. And before that, there's going to be even more play-ins to get into the round of 128. Yeah. So the men's singles draw is massive. Um, I think the most upsets will come in men's singles um, versus yeah. men's, men's doubles or mixed doubles. Well, I mean, I'll tell you right now, like, for example, Sherry plays a play in and then there's Scarpa and Donald Young. Mm-hmm. But the winners of those, whoever gets out of that mess has to play Jame. Except for this format would really benefit players like Ryan Cherry. He can go really hard for one one match yep. and then have the rest of the day to relax. Yeah. So yeah. It looks like he would play Tuesday PM, Wednesday AM, mm-hmm. Wednesday PM and then Thursday. Yeah. So he can yeah. I mean really assuming you're continuing to win. Yeah. So um, who do you have winning this or top three? So the other thing is Jack Sock actually got two buys, which is wild. Yeah. So Jack Sock is all the way in the round of 32. So he'll play Connor Garnett. Yeah. So he's a 33 seed. Well, his first round, he'll. I'm assuming he'll play I think Naveen Nave- yeah. or AJ Kohler. Yeah. Or I think AJ either Kohler. one of them can beat him. Who, uh, Jack Sock? Yeah. Maybe Naveen. I don't know about AJ. Yeah. Naveen. I think, I think yeah. I'm going to say that we see Connor Garnett and I'm going to mix it up. We're going to go Connor Garnett Chris and Christian Alshon in the semis. Okay. On one side, the other side, I think we're going to see Jame upset Ben Johns and then Tyson. And our finals are going to be Connor and Tyson. With, wow. With Connor winning it. Bold. Bold Jimmy Miller. That's my that's my prediction. This progression draw, I think, in my personal opinion, it hurts the Johns brothers. And let me tell you why. Because they are slow starters, and they're immediately first match of the day. There's no warm up. Mm-hmm. Their first match of the day, like we'll get to well, men's doubles is next. Ben and Colin Johns very Yes and no, because if Ben's playing singles, then he'll have a warm-up game of singles, and then he goes into mixed doubles, and then after that, that he'll have men's doubles. Yeah. So he'll essentially play at least two games. It won't be of men's doubles, but he'll be out on the That's court. That's true. But like his first match of the day, like in the quarters, is Tyson, is probably going to be Tyson and Deckel. Yeah. At, you know, 10 a.m. Okay. Do you want to get into women's? Yeah, let's go women's singles. Okay. Yeah, so women's singles. I think the big thing to talk about here is Jeannie Bouchard. She actually gets... My girl. Your girl, your partner. She was playing tennis two days ago. I know, and I'm not sure she's played pickleball at all, ever. (laughs) Ever in her life. She's going to ask you how to score. She's going to be like, wait, I can't stand here? She's going to be flushing balls from the kitchen line. Hey, as long as we get her in a KOTC shirt, then we're good. Done. Yeah, Jeannie, I got you something. 99% of her audience is male, which we love males. Yeah, we love men. Men love us. <laughs> um, so Jeannie actually gets two buys, and it's a relatively winnable. Sop- winnable. And then she'll get Leia, um, which obviously I think that Leia is a massive favorite there. But but with that being said, you know, we could see – I mean, Jeannie Leia could be a fun – a fun matchup. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Annalie actually gets a buy all the way into the round of 16. Um, gosh, it's, it's really, I mean, there's a lot more women in these draws than, than we've seen in the past with this mm-hmm. progression draws. So I'm going to give my predictions on this one. I'm going to say that we have, so Annalie's the one, obviously Catherine's the two, Leia's the three, Mary Brosh is the four, um, I'm excited to see Jeannie play singles. I think maybe depending on how much she takes it serious, I think she could be a serious threat in singles in four to six months. Yeah, uh, I could I see think, that. Uh, this first tournament will be great for Who, her. But who's the five seed? There's no five seed on here. 
That's interesting, huh? Yeah. I wonder if it was Jesse. Jesse had to pull out. Jesse Irvin being the five seed. I mean, you never look at this freaking draw, dude. Okay. Um, who are your, do you have anyone else winning it other than Annalie? Yeah, I think Annalie's going to obviously get to the finals. Annalie, um, Granto, finals. Yeah, I think that that's, that's definitely the the favorite there. I do think that uh, Dominique Schaefer could upset Judith Castillo and end up playing in the quarters against Leia. Okay. I could see that happening. Um, I think Lacey Schneeman is, so here's the thing. Paris Todd is actually way down the list as a qualifier. Oh, she's playing. Yeah, and she gets Lacey Schneeman and Lauren Stratman. So I could actually see Paris coming out of that mm-hmm. over Lacey and Lauren, yeah, and then playing Catherine in the in the quarters. Yeah. Um, the other name, Christine Maddox, mm-hmm. is also playing, um, but she has to play a playing game. Okay. And then that um, ch- is it Chow Yi Wang. So yeah, she actually has a pretty good. Say that name one more time. Chow Yi Wang. That's it, right? She's a tennis player. Uh huh. And I think that I think it's going to be like the same thing that you see with the men, where she's going to come over and be better at singles before she is at yeah at doubles. And so I I could see her maybe pulling an upset or two. So okay. Yeah, but it's going to be Annalie. I'm going to say Annalie and Catherine in the finals. And I mean, if I had to put money on it, I think Annalie is going to win it. Okay. Weird, huh? All right, let's go on to mixed doubles. Okay, so mixed doubles bracket is massive. It's huge. So a couple new partnerships. I tweeted about this. Follow me on Twitter. Um, that kind of are standing out. So just looking at the play-in, the play-in game, so Pablo and Etta mm-hmm. are a 17 seed. And most likely, they will have to play, we'll play you and Jeannie. Yeah. That will be your first round match. So Our first you, round match. So, I actually wish that we had one or two matches before. So let me just real quick, how did you and Jeannie get two buys? We're just that good. You guys have, she has zero points. I have so many points. And you guys got two buys. They should have put us as a top four seed, to be honest. You're, so you don't even start till the round of 32. So you don't even play till Wednesday night. Hey, I need to change Not my bad. flight now. So Jade Kawamoto. It's because she wasn't going to get in until Wednesday. So she had to. Oh, yeah. They had to they, give her that. They do whatever they want for Jeannie, huh? Exactly. So then Jade Kawamoto and DJ Young. Have to play in the play-in. They have to play in the play-in. Lee Waters is playing with Christian Alshon. How do you, how do you feel about that? Um, I mean, they have a close relationship, so makes sense. I heard that that was Jesse's partner was Christian, and Jesse pulled out, and so he picked up Lee. Why did she pull out? Her, I think her elbow's still jacked up. She's had some elbow pain and elbow issues, so I, I assume I'm that's, I'm making the assumption there. But I talked to her at nationals, I mean at finals, and she told me that her elbow was like yeah. She had to do like this scraping or something. So in terms of other partnerships, Tyra and Dylan, I think will be interesting. Um, the funny thing is, is Jade and DJ, mm-hmm. if they get past Tyra and Dylan, will actually probably play Jackie and Riley. <laughs> so Jackie and Riley is an interesting partnership too. It's yeah. a, new, a new partnership. Um, you and Jeannie, uh, Tina Pisnick and Deco Barr. I think if Deco plays big, that could be a good partnership because Tina's pretty steady over there. Yeah. <clears throat> um, let's see. Other ones, Leia and Andre de Eskew. Mm-hmm. That's a new one. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So Do you again, know if that's all year or just for a couple tournaments? I don't tournaments? think so. I think that I think she's playing some with Andre, some with Hayden, maybe, maybe not. I can't remember, but but I think that's I think that, that partnership could go really well. Uh-huh. Because I think that there's a there's a good balance there, kind of a yin and yang between them. Yeah. Um, Lacey Schneeman and Rettenmeyer. Catherine and Jack Sock get two buys. I mean, Catherine has the points for it. And then the other one that that um, are interesting, Megan Dazon and Tyson McGuffin. If Tyson's hands, because I don't think Tyson has the best hands. Mm-hmm. Megan loves to pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. If Tyson's hands can keep up. He might be... Um uh, it might be advantageous for him with this Vulcan ball because it's going to be a little yeah, bit slower. That's true. And so maybe five to ten percent slower. Yeah. So that might help him. 
Yeah, that's true. So that so that'd be interesting. Also, other people in the playing game: Maggie Brasha and Hayden Patrick Quinn have to play a playing game. Yeah, Rachel Rohrbacher and Fed are playing a playing game. Colin Johns and Brooke Buckner. Yeah, Brooke Buckner back from having a baby. Yeah. So I mean, some of these players have they've got a freaking road. Yeah. Like they play Tuesday night. Yeah. Mary Brasha and Gabe Tardio. They play Tuesday night. Yeah. And you don't play till Wednesday night. So, yeah. so yeah, I'm going to say mixed doubles. Um, it's really hard to bet against Ben and Annaly. I'm going to say Ben and Annaly go semis. I think Jade and Riley, or Jackie and Riley go semis. Over Vivian and Thomas? Yeah. Okay. And then on the other side of it. Um, James and Anna versus Jack Sock and Catherine. Who do you have? I'm going to say... I'm going to say Leia and Deescu beat James and Anna. That's a bold one. Okay. And then I'm going to say Leia and Deescu versus Sock and Parento. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say Leia and Deescu win it. Win that. And then on the other side, why not? Megan and Tyson. So Leia and Deescu played Megan and Tyson in one semi. Ben and Annalie against Jackie and Riley in the other. And I think Ben and Annalie still win it. Okay. All right, men's doubles now. Oh gosh, these are these are. I'm gonna get freaking roasted. Yeah, I don't think this one's uh, going to be one to write home about for you. Okay, uh, men's doubles. So once again, there is a round of 128. Yeah, and once again, it is it is big. Yeah, this is insane. Like there is some Roscoe and Travis are in the 128. Yeah, but they're a 16 seed. That's what's weird. Yeah. So, but I think. Travis was supposed to play with Zane and Zane pulled out. And so he had to get Roscoe. Okay. But yeah, that's, that's crazy. So th- this one is interesting because again, Ben and Colin are the one James and Matt will be playing together. They're the three seed Dylan and J-Dub are the two Riley and Thomas are the four, which is, which here's the interesting thing. Riley and Thomas are the four, but they're on the other side of the bracket from Ben and Colin. Yeah. That's what's weird about this. Like these seedings don't really match up or make Let sense. Let PPA have it. Is it rigged? No, I mean PPA says we reserve the right to make changes. And look, I think that you should create matchups in some way, but <laughs> but gosh, yeah. Like at least at least I, so I know that we've talked to Connor Pardo. Mm. The one seed and the two seed are always going to be on different sides. Mm-hmm. The three and the four can be flip flopped. Yeah. Right. So what they do is they randomly draw them. They can be flip flopped. And then it's like five through nine can all be changed. Mm -hmm. And then like nine through 15 can all be interchanged. And so that's what happens. The problem is, is it just looks funny when like the, the, you know, the three is on the same side as the. Are there any partnerships you're excited to see? So I'm excited to see Jay and Pat because they played two years ago and they had a pretty good run. Um, yeah. And then they took last year off and now they're reconnecting. And yeah. So I think it'll be interesting to see if they're able to continue at the level they were at or if the game has changed. Yeah, that one will be interesting. Pat's taking some time off. He's been hurt. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how they come back. Connor Garnett and Rafa Hewitt, is that one that's going to be seen more often throughout the year? Is that one I think off? so. Yeah, I think okay. so. I mean, you played them in nationals. You and James, mm-hmm. Connor and Rafa is one of the best matches of the entire event. So if you haven't watched that, go check it out. You might hear somebody commentating. Yeah. I actually saw a TikTok. It was someone posted it on TikTok, one mm-hmm. of the points. And all you hear is me, and I think I was doing it with Ireland, mm-hmm. and we just go, "Whoa!" After one of the points, because it was just insane. Like yeah. you couldn't; it was speechless. And so there's some in, unbelievable firefights in that. So yeah, Connor and Connor and Rafa will be a good one. Julian Arnold and Christian Alshon. I didn't see that one. No, I think that I think they both held out for Riley, and then they both got stuck with each other. Yeah, that's my opinion on that one. Yeah, Schick and Soccer a thirty seed, and they get freaking two buys. This is where we talk about these tennis players getting, getting preferential, preferential treatment. treatment here. It's it's crazy. Uh, obviously, Pablo and Fed, Hayden and Callen. So you will play. You you're playing with Todd Fote. I'm playing with Todd Fote, a Utah guy. Um, we came in at the 13 seed, and that's actually probably fairly accurate. Todd hasn't played hardly any PPA, so he yeah. doesn't have many points. And then 
If we win our first one, then we'll play into James and Matt. James yeah. and Matt. Which I actually like that Matt's up for you too. I enjoy it. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think a lot of people would definitely have James and Matt coming out, but I actually feel are you gonna chirp? Good. Are you going to chirp at James? Of course. Yep. There's a lot of stuff that's been happening with him lately. Are you gonna... Can you expand on that? No, but... I'm surprised he's able to play. I know. So are you going to chirp at him about I'm it? Try and get him kick, kicked out of the tournament. Yeah, I mean, sounds like he's been getting people kicked out of tournaments, so... Uh, so in this one, I'm going to say Ben and Colin. Um, Pablo and Fed. And then J-Dub and Dylan. And I'm going to say that I'm going to say Julian and Christian upset Riley and Thomas. Donald Young's a tennis player. He 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 doesn't get the preferential treatment in men's doubles. Yeah, but who's he playing with? Al, Alvaro Terran. Exactly. Rest my case. Who's Jack Sock playing with? Colin Schick, which is crazy. Like, could you not find anybody else? I heard Colin Schick left medical school. I heard he took a leave. A leave for yeah. like eight months or something yeah. to focus on pickleball. Yeah. That's big, a big bet. <clears throat> big mistake. Big mistake, Colin. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to say Julian and Christian against J-Dub and Dylan. And I I mean, men's doubles, I'm going to stick to it. Colin and Ben versus J-Dub and Dylan in the finals. Okay. All right. Women's doubles to wrap it up. Women's doubles. It's one of our favorite. Again, a massive field. Um, yeah, so we get to see our first look. Well, not our first look this year, but they're going to be partnership all year of Leia and Tyra. Um, Jackie and Jade are playing together. Mm-hmm. So that one will be interesting. Anna Bright and Rachel Rohrbacher. Lauren Stratman and Elise Jones. Paris Todd and Vivian Glosman. That one's interesting. That is interesting, yeah. but I think that's because Paris and Simone had their lots fa- of uh, firepower, a lot of firepower on that <laughs> yeah. court. I think because they had their falling out uh-huh. with Simone and Glosman slid in. Georgia Johnson and Tina Pisnik. Okay, it's another kind of new one there. Um, but just looking at it, I mean, and then Lucy and Callie. So that's the one thing. So for example, like the the Kawamoto's are a seven seed. Technically, they should be on the other side of the bracket. I think everybody. Obviously, you know, we lo- we love Lucy and Callie, but I think everybody prefers to be on that side of the bracket mm-hmm. instead of Annalie and Catherine's. Yeah. And so if you're a seven, you would expect to be on the side of the bracket against them. Yeah. And instead, like the Kawamoto's are on the side with Annalie and Catherine, which doesn't make any sense because the one, the eight, the four are on the right side. And then all of a sudden the seven is flopped mm-hmm. where it should be Lauren Stratman and Elise Jones are on the other side. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but... I'm going to say that I'm going to say this is a tournament that Megan and Etta get to the semis. Okay. Um, Annalie and Catherine, obviously on the other side, I'm going to say that, I mean, I'm going to say Lucy and Callie mm-hmm. and then the, the bottom of that brackets where it gets kind of interesting, but I'm probably, I think Anna and Rachel do you see anyone upsetting Annalie and CP this tournament? No, I think that the finals are probably going to be. I mean, I think we're going to see Lucy and Kelly against. I think this Annalie tournament and might be interesting just because this was our off season, if you want to call it that. And so yeah. I think a lot of the pros took some time off. Yeah. And so maybe some of them aren't as. Yeah. Um, have been practicing as much. And so maybe if some somebody's going upset, this might be the tournament that it happens. Yeah, in. for sure. And I could see, like, honestly, I could see the Kyle Motos. You know, they don't play till Thursday. So essentially they have to be, we're, we'll assume Jeannie and Chi Yao Wang, Chow Yi Wang. I don't know which one. One more time. <laughs> we'll assume that Jeannie and her partner uh, lose to Megan and Etta. Mm-hmm. And so Megan and Etta against the Kawamoto's. I mean, I, I could see the Kawamoto's winning that. Um, Yeah. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. So, but I still think that we're not going to see as much parody on this. So I'm going to say Annalie and Catherine continue their undefeated streak. Okay. Awesome. So. Well, um, both of us will actually be at the masters this week. Yes. And so if you guys want to say hi Come to us, say hi, punch him in the arm or something like yeah, that. Maybe don't do that. Call him out for all the inaccurate stuff he's said in the past. Feel free to do that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be announcing, uh, commentating Wednesday. Cool. You're probably going to be doing it every day, but 
Well, I know for sure Wednesday yeah. grandstand. We're, we've said this multiple times, but we are going to try to do a pot out there as well. Well, we got to get Jeannie. Like yeah. Jeannie, like I said, if you're sacrificing a whole tournament, yeah, because she's not going to be good. She we'll doesn't see. watch the pod, so I can say this, but she's not going to be good. So if you're going to sacrifice a whole tournament, we at least need to get Jeannie on the pod. 10 minutes. That's it. Yeah. Give us 10 minutes, Jeannie. Okay. I got some questions. Um, so yeah, let us know if you have any questions with the masters. We're, I'm excited. I've been training, working out for this. So I'm super yeah. excited. 2024 is your year. Yes. I've been saying that. I didn't say when, but sometime this year is yes. going to happen. Yes. Um, all right, moving on. But first and foremost, we want to give a big shout out to our next sponsor of this segment, Reset Pickable. Now that the tournaments are up and in motion, that means you're going to have a lot of gunk on your guys' uh, paddles. And so use this stuff to clean it off. It's going to make it feel like new and kind of give it that refreshed um, um, spin that you're used to with those new paddles without having to spend an arm and a leg. Yes. Do you know the website? Uh, reset pickleball dot, dot shop shop yeah. and use code KOTC. It makes for a perfect gift around these holidays and you can put it in your bag, easy to travel with and they yeah. last forever. Yeah. So did you know Ben Williams bought four of these? We have a friend of ours who just bought four of these. Yeah. And if worse, if you don't like how they work, uh, they smell great. So yeah, that's true. You can use it as like, like almost like a set. breeze. Exactly. Yeah. Spray it around yeah, your house. There you go. No, but we love it. Uh, thank you reset for the support. All right, Jimmy, you're yes. deep in the trenches on the MLP PPA merger. It was supposed to happen by the end of t- 2023. Did not. It was supposed to happen early January. Most likely won't. Um, but it will happen in January. Most likely. So I don't know how much I can and can't, I'm allowed to say, but you know, I'm going to say it anyways, because that's what we do. Um, I was told that the merger, they, they have a date of January 12th that they expect the merger to be done. That is next. What is that? Five days from now? This week. This week. Yeah. That they expect the merger to be done by the 12th. There was a little bit of a hiccup around Christmas time where it looked like possibly the merger was going to blow up. Was going to blow up. There was a couple of owners that weren't happy with the terms. It seemed like maybe they were going to um, kind of kick back and try and blow the whole thing up, and you know, see what they could do about running the league themselves. And then cooler heads prevailed. Everything now is on track, and I was told that it's essentially what's the word imminent. Sure, that the merger is going to happen. Um, They're expecting it to close as early as the 12th. Okay. The draft will be most likely the last week of January. And then the first. You said around the 20th. Yeah. Around the. Yeah. So is that the last week? I think there's a couple more weeks after that. One or two more weeks after that. And then the first event is February 7th in LA, which will be challenger only. Give us a real quick, if if it's possible, a real quick update with the format. So Premier is going to stay the same. They're going to have four players. Yeah, so Premier is going to have four players. So what will happen is each team will be given $500,000 of fake money, and then they can spend up to $500,000 of their own cold, hard cash. Okay? And what will happen is you can essentially, this is in Premier only, you can bid on two players. Okay, so for example, if you want Ben Johns, you can bid up to a million dollars, all of your money. You have to save $2, I believe. So you can essentially bid all of your money on Ben Johns. Um, And then the remaining, the other two players, and you actually bid for draft spots as as opposed to like players. So it's not like some sort of freaking player auction. You know, I think that that's probably uncouth these days. Um, but so you bid for the actual draft spot. So you can bid for the number one spot, the number two spot. Okay. And then the remaining two players that you'll add to your team will just be drafted in a normal, a normal draft format. And this is all going to be done via zoom. All via zoom. Yeah. They're not going to do a big draft thing. Yeah. But we, yeah. And then in challenger, you get six players. Mm -hmm. So three guys, three girls, three guys, three girls. It's going to be a snake draft. Just like they've done in the past. So I did that there. Um, but the format for Challenger in terms of competition is still up in the air. So they haven't determined. Curr- they'll, they'll decide the day before. Yeah. Currently, they're basically saying they're not sure if you're going to have you draft. Like if the format will be where you can sub at any time. 
or if you have to declare subs before the matches, um, you have to declare subs before each game. They haven't determined that yet, but each team will have six players. Okay. I, my personal opinion is you've got to run, you should run challenger like AAA baseball. AAA baseball is where they try stuff, right? That's where they tried the pitch clock. That's where they try different rule changes and see if it works. And then you implement it in premiere. Yeah. And so I actually really love the world team tennis format where you can actually sub, mm-hmm. you know? So I think as long as you have a timeout, you should be able to sub in a player mid match. Why not? Good thing you're not making the rules. Well, I mean, frick, we were down six <laughs> Oh and seven Oh or whatever it was in the, in the freaking challenger playoffs. Uh-huh. It'd been nice to, you know, call a timeout and be like, Cassidy, you're a good dude, but peace out. You could have called the timeout and told him to do something different. We did, but I'm just saying, we, we did come back, just to be clear. We came back. I'm just saying that it, you could sub in that manner. So that is... Uh, the thing that's interesting to me is many, not all, but many of the PPA players that signed with PPA only have to do six of the yeah, so MLP is, events. This is a problem. Okay, This is the MLP made a big, massive mistake if they don't fix this. Because if you sign with PPA, you're only committed to six events because that was all you're committed to with Vibe. Yeah. So that means you're going to pay whatever you're going to pay for Ben Johns, and he only has to play six. Mm -hmm. And we were told that he's only committed to six. Most of the PPA players that I'm aware of have only committed to six. So there's nine team events, and you're going to only have these players for six. So does that mean that are they going to be worth that high of a draft pick? Now, Ben obviously is, but if you have somebody that went in the fourth round, Mm -hmm. if you have an AJ Kohler, if you have a Jay DeVillier and they only want to play six, do you pass on them because you only get them for six of the nine Mm -hmm. and you draft a CJ Klinger who can play all nine or you draft a Gabe Tardio. So you're a GM. Do you do that? Yeah, I think so. Really? If Yeah. I mean, I think you have to weigh like obviously. Okay. So let's let's put Jay in the hot seat. Yeah. Jay's, We'll just hypothetically speaking, he's in the fourth round. Yeah. And he's only, and once again, this is hypothetical. He's only committed to six of the events. Yeah. Do you take him or do you take somebody else? So here, here, here's the thing. Do you take him or CJ Klinger or Todd Fo? Yeah. I think I take, if I could have CJ Klinger for nine events or Jay for six, I take CJ Klinger. Interesting. If I could have CJ Klinger or AJ, I take CJ Klinger for nine. Now, if it's nine to nine, then obviously that changes things. Okay. So I think that that's what's going to be really interesting is, is here's the other thing though. There, if you signed up for Premier, you already committed 400,000. You're already committing another 500,000. Mm-hmm. Who's to say that these owners aren't going to go to a Jay or a Ben or a Tyler Lung and say, hey, play all nine. I'll give you $20,000 on event. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's going to happen. 20,000 is pretty steep. I think well, uh, whatever it is, yeah. I just think that the market is going to determine what happens with that. But it is gonna it is gonna cause some interesting things for on draft day. I think we're gonna see some players fall to challenger. Mm-hmm. But I also think that there's gonna be some Will players. Those premier players still receive the same amount. If you get they the go, same amount of money no matter what. Even if you're in challenger. Yeah. Okay. So you get the same amount of money no matter what. Gotcha. So, but I, I think the issue will be. You know, if you're going to fall, let me ask you this. If you find out that you're going to go to challenge, fall to challenger, if you only play six, mm-hmm. will you commit to nine so you don't play challenger? You're putting me on the spot. I, I am. I don't know. I am. If you knew that you were going to go to challenger, if you only played six, mm-hmm. would you rather play all nine in premiere or would you rather play six in challenger? I'll have to get back to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll have somebody get back to you on that. I think we're going to have some players that are going to, that's a tough yeah. question they need to answer. But the merger, everything looks good at this point. Obviously, things change literally every day. But right now, it's on track. Um, the other interesting thing is the only players that can be drafted at this point are those that have signed with MLP or PPA. So if you have not signed, there's no chance for yeah. you to be drafted this first round. Yeah. And then what they're probably going to do, do a is... Waiver, a, a, yeah. Um, so there's a lot of talent out there that's not signed with MLP or PPA. Yeah. And so the only way you're going to grow the league is you've got to sign those players at some point. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they'll figure that out. They'll put them in some sort of waiver pool and then play, people can pick them up. Yeah. But for this first draft, 
you know, I, I can't, I'm trying to think of someone who's not signed, but like Ariel Butler, who I think is a, a good solid player. And I think there's she's a lot of Utah guys that aren't yeah. signed. You got Sterling, you got Mario, yeah. you got, well, Mario is signed with MLP. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah. But like Ariel Butler, I know isn't signed. I think she's a solid player. She's good enough to play challenger, yeah. but nobody can draft her. I mean, you had that whole Arizona pickleball league. There's a few guys, right? Did Craig Johnson sign with anybody? Yeah. Did, you know, August Gee. anyways. So yeah, it'll be interesting, but that first event is February 7th, but it is challenger only and it's West coast challenger teams only. So it's going to be like the breakers and it's in LA and it's in LA. Yep. Sherwood country club. So okay. a thousand Oaks. Technically. That's where the last MLP was supposed to be at. And then they canceled yeah. the app and moved it. To, yeah. yeah. So how are your uh, resolutions going? Your dude, goals for 2024? Dude, I am all about resolutions. What, what are some of them? Just kidding. <laughs> Nothing, dude. I'm not that guy. Okay. Um, next, in our last segment of questions, thank you to Acacia Pickleball. I have been with them for about three to four years. They are sponsoring this segment. They are great shoes. We love them. We love the colors. Um, super soft, super comfortable, super lightweight. And use code KOTC at Acacia Sports. Dot com yes um, to save on your shoes they have great options go love check them. them out we love them I'm gonna Super wear mine family. to the masters you're gonna wear them yeah they're white yeah all white everything I don't think shoes have to be white but it looks better it just looks better like don't show up in orange shoes like some of you show up go white like hey they make an orange shoe I know but they also make a white one like where players wear white shoes okay this was this podcast wasn't last minute, but we forgot to kind of do the Q&A in advance. So we did one this morning and we had a, quite a few people write in already. So okay. we're going to um, go through some of those. Oh, I might have a couple. And then actually. starting next week, we'll be back to basically our normal schedule, um, kind of on the releases. Okay. Somebody said, Tyson DeYola, when's his paddle coming out? Where is Elise going? And Riley. So yes, Tyson has gone to Yola. Um, it's been somewhat well known for the past three to four months, I would say. Yeah, his paddle is called the Magnus Alpha. How do you like that name? I mean, I think we have somebody who said it best. It sounds like a condom. <laughs> but, Tro Trojan's going to be his next sponsor. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you know, Beta's using alphas. There you go. But I don't know. It looks like a cool paddle. I'm sure it's great. So... I played, Colin Johns has a new paddle coming out. Yeah. I don't know when it's officially out, but I played against it. This person I was playing with, he had it, and it was one of the most powerful paddles I've ever I've played heard. against. I've heard it rivals the gearbox. Crazy. In fact, there's some Yola. Crazy. There's some Yola-sponsored players who are saying that it is insane. Um, where is Elise going? I actually do not know. I do know that she has been using a carbon. She's been using other paddles, kind of testing them out, but yeah. I don't, I actually don't know for sure. Um, I would imagine she would announce in the next probably three to four weeks or so. Where do you think Riley's going? Um, so if I had to guess, I know he's talking to quite a few companies, um, but I would imagine he's going to Proton. Riley's, yeah, I think that that's who, I mean, would want him the most. They have a relationship with him, his Arizona guy. Yeah. The, the funny thing about Riley is he doesn't, he clearly doesn't care about the name brand. I mean, he was with, <laughs> he was with Gamma. He'll take he went whoever to, pays the yeah, highest. Yeah. He went to Takea. He will make do with whoever pays the highest. Who was he with before Gamma? They had the. He was with uh, Paddle. Paddle? No. Paddle Tech. Was it Paddle Tech? Um, Selkirk. He was with Selkirk. Selkirk. Yeah. He yeah. was with Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. So they have those interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Um. And then he went to freaking Gamma and then he went to Takea. So yeah, I think that Riley will, you know, he'll go over whoever's going to pay him and he'll, you know, a good craftsman doesn't play him his tools. And I've heard that those Takea paddles weren't that great to begin with. In fact, I think the words that one of their pros said to me was it's like playing with a Toys R Us paddle. So with that being said, I think Proton's a good guess. Where else is uh, somebody else asked another question? Where's Deckel going, do you think? So he was with Engage. He was he with Engage. That. He left them. I think that some of these guys have got to go to Selkirk because now they've got a lot of money with Tyson leaving. Yeah. Did you see that Tyson had to change his signature? Yes. Yeah. He can't have used the same signature. Yeah. Because yeah. Selkirk came up with it. Yeah. yeah. So there was a huge. Yeah. Yeah. I would guess. I think that I could see Deckel going to, to Selkirk. Um, AJ's got to go somewhere too now. What are your thoughts with Tyson to Yola though? I mean, I think it's big for Yola. I, I, I mean, you have Ben and now you have Tyson. Someone's like, oh, I wonder if Ben's upset. 
Ben has a lifetime deal and he gets a percentage of every Yola paddle sold. Yeah. He loves that Tyson's at Yola because he's going to get a percentage of all of Tyson's paddles. Yeah. Well, do we know those exact details? Was it? No. I thought it was only on his paddle. Oh, I heard it was on every Yola paddle. Oh, if that's I don't the know. case, then yeah. yeah. But Tyson's going to sell a lot of paddles. Yeah. I mean, Tyson's a big, he's a big name and he's going to sell a ton of freaking paddles. Are you going to say hi to him at Masters? No. No. Okay. Um, do pickleball events have clicks? If so, who's in each? Which ones do you not mess with? Or no, sorry. Which ones don't mess with you two? I would imagine. The clicks? Yeah. I think that there's definitely little clicks within. I think it's more territorial based, like where you're from. like Yeah, location. like the, the Florida guys seem to hang out with each other, right? Yeah. Like, And then like like Pablo and Fed are always with each, with each other. Yeah. I think Rafa is kind of part of that group. Rafa Hewitt will slide in with Pablo and Fetty, right? Um, I don't know. There is a little bit of clicky here and there, but it's more like who you, who you train with and who you hang out with. Yeah. But I don't think anybody's like super unwelcoming. Yeah. Do you feel like that? No, no. I think, yeah, people kind of keep to themselves. Or to yeah, their they groups, just kind of do their thing. Yeah. But there are people that like literally they just will hang out with, with like you're not going to see Catherine Parento very often kicking it in the player's lounge with a whole group of people. Yeah. She's going to be with Athena and they're going to do their thing. Yeah. You know, Tyson, same thing, right? He's going to yeah. be with Meg and stallion performance i don't even know his name yeah and they're going to kind of be doing their thing so yeah will any app players make a wave at ppa events this year i mean desk is the only one like, i could see it in singles but not in doubles well the problem is none of the freaking hype nation guys sign deals mm -hmm. they're all going to do the clinics and apps and none of them are going to play ppas so we're not yeah. going to see a ton of crossover this year yeah so that's going to that's going to be a problem Somebody said, what does it take to be a sponsor of this show? Hit up Tyler. He'll tell you. Hit up Jimmy. He'll tell you Either to write a big check. Slide in. Slide into my DMs. Is PPA trying to shut out up and comers with a progressive draw? Is it in their best interest? I don't think they're trying to shut them out, but I think that they're trying to showcase the top players as often as possible. Mm -hmm. And this allows them to do that. Why does PPA feature so many unproven people like Luke Wasson? Wow. That's Shots me. fired. Shots. Can he's we say going, who said he's that? going to screenshot this. Uh, Can we say who said Was that Hayden that, put, that sent that in? You know who it is. Is that. Oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, I think that. <laughs> that is funny. I saw Luke Wasson play TLC. How was it? I mean, he's a 5 0 trying to play pro. Okay. Uh, I think, I mean, I think he's fine, but here's the best part about pro pickleball. Anybody can sign up for pro sign up, play a qualifier. Yeah. If you make it, then great. If you don't, then thank you for the donation. Okay. Last question. Why is a lot of pickleball marketing content so incredibly cringe? I love pickleball, but holy crap. Some of these pages. She's talking about Riley. hundred <laughs> percent. My new paddle sponsor is not going to tell you yet. He's the worst. Dude, You're following awful. along. No, he's awful. Like, you saved he, that. You're, no, you turned on notifications. That dude has the worst like social media presence. He's just not good at it. Right? He, he loves it. He's hyping it up. But did you see the, the other one with freaking Ben playing Fortnite? That and one was good. he's eating goldfish. That one like, was good. With his shirt, shirt off. off. Let's he's go. Like, That's a dub. Like, <laughs> dude, like, stop. Like that stuff is crazy. Like um, there's some rough personalities in pickleball. What percentage of pickleball players play Fortnite though? I've never, uh, I love games. I love games. games. Know. Gamer, gamer, gamer. But I've never understood the obsession with Fortnite. You can build. I know. But like Halo, Call of Duty, yeah, Starcraft, like those, yeah. Warcraft, even League of Legends. Did you, did you play World of Warcraft? Uh, Warcraft I did. Warcraft 3. Did you have a Did you have a character you built and everything? That was more World of Warcraft. Oh, you remember yeah. Andre Kirilenko? Oh yeah, he had his World of Warcraft character tattooed on his back. Yeah, you would never do that. No, no. What's your StarCraft handle? I have a I have a couple. Oh, okay. What's what level are you? Dime or Grandmaster? Really? Yeah. Like legitimately Grandmaster. Grandmaster. Somebody asked me that, and I told them that you're a Grandmaster, and they were like, "No way." <laughs> That means he's basically a pro at StarCraft. 
Like you're a pro. Yeah. Like, so you're a pro at pickleball, you're a pro at StarCraft. Yeah. That's that grandmaster. I assume like grandmaster is pretty impressive. If you're a chess grandmaster, you're like, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, anything else, Jimmy? No. So it's, it's snowing here in Utah. So is it going to take you another two to three hours to go two miles? It might, it might, might take me a while to get home. So he, he was supposed to come over this morning at 845. I get a text, of course, 830. Hey, uh, shoveling some snow. I'm going to be a little bit late. It took me a while. 930 comes by. Still not here. Well, I'm 20. First of all, it's a 20 minute drive with no snow. Uh huh. So it takes a minute. Okay. Anyways. Anyways. Um, See you guys at Masters. We are stoked to be back uh, producing these. Um, let us know if you guys have any questions. And we will see you hopefully at Masters. If not, we'll see you next week. Make yeah. sure to hit that like and subscribe yes, button. Please subscribe. And go check out our right sponsors there. who There's support our show. Um, they make incredible products and it actually supports us as well. And we will talk to you guys later.